Oh, hi everyone, how you all doing? Uh, so, we're out on the veg garden today. Um, we're in April now, already. I don't know how that happened. Uh, one minute it was winter and then it's spring and everything's starting to spring back to life. So, um, we're almost halfway through April now, so everything's really starting to start growing now. Um, all the buds and leaves are starting to come out on the trees and uh, it's just that time of year where everything starts getting into action so uh, I haven't done an update for a while so uh, I thought I'd give you a quick veg garden tour today so I've got a few things uh, that I want to show you and whatnot so uh, if you're interested in joining me today that'd be absolutely brilliant so I'll just come and get the camera flip you around and we'll start today's veg garden tour okay so Start from this end, uh, so that's the kiwi vine there, um, no, no signs of life yet on this, except for the little buds starting to appear here, so no kiwis on that yet, uh, hopefully this year. Uh, I do apologise if there's some wind noise in this video, uh, so this is a, one of my great pines. Again, no signs of life yet, uh, but the buds are starting to swell on this. Uh, but we don't want them coming out too soon because uh, the frost will kill off the leaves. And in there is the raspberry canes. You can see the leaves just starting to form here. So they should start coming out soon. So the weather's been a bit funny. Uh, we've had on and off, rain, snow, sleet, hailstones. Uh, all these planters along here are strawberries. Uh, I need to sort them out. Uh, I think I might actually empty them all out and do it properly this year because I haven't really touched them too much for the last couple of years. And uh, they're getting a bit overcrowded in there. So uh, at some point I'll be separating them out and uh, just re on them back in there with some nice um, compost or something. Uh, that's another great vine. No signs of life on that yet. Uh, this was a new addition. So we'll have to see how that goes. Hopefully I haven't killed it um, when I transplanted it into that pot. And this is my... One of my Japanese wine berries, I think, the wine berry. Uh, so I've pruned that back a little while ago, and it's got lots of new growth starting to come here. Um, it's quite spiky. Um, I haven't had any fruit off this because it was a new addition last year. Uh, but I'm looking forward to trying them. And that's another great vine. Uh, this was grown from a seed uh, that my mum gave me. So that's just got buds on it at the moment, it's not, it's not come out yet. Um, but we don't want them to come out too early. Because uh, we don't want any frost damage on them. Uh, that's the blueberry bush, that was a new addition last year. Uh, so it's not very established yet, but did a fair amount of growth last year. And you can see the leaves just starting to come out on there. Uh, that's a goji berry in there. Again, a new addition last year. Uh, I potted that up the other day, repotted it because it was in a little pot. And all these leaves have appeared over the past week or so. So, again, look forward to some goji berries, hopefully. I did have a goji berry before, and I never had a single goji berry on it, but hopefully, this one might. Uh, that's one of my established current bushes uh, that's been in this pot and at the beginning of the year I went around all my pots and mulched a top layer of chicken manure compost on there. Uh, this is all nice chicken manure compost that I made myself. Uh, I just put a nice thick layer on each and this moss here has just appeared, I think it's from this 
because I've got this stick in here, but uh, it doesn't hurt the plants. It will just help keep the moisture in. So we'll leave it on there. There's no need to take that off. Uh, but it is starting to bud up and leaves are starting to appear. So again, hopefully get some nice currents on there. And this is the um, gooseberry. Uh, this is looking like it's going to have a good year this year. So we had a major problem the first couple of years. We had the um, oh, what it called saw fly, uh, but we seem to have got rid of them last year. So it did a lot of growth last year, and I'm hoping this year we'll get some decent. Gooseberries, you can see the little flowers there waiting to open. And the leaves, which have not long appeared on here. So, each one of these little flowers, um, all things being good, should turn into a gooseberry. And there's a fair few on there, so hopefully that will do well. And this one here is a, another current bush. A little bit further ahead than the other one. Uh, there's two different varieties. Um, not entirely sure which one's which or which types they are. And um, every year it seems to get this sort of red tint to the leaves. And um, I think it's a type of disease, but it doesn't appear to do much damage from what I can tell. I did try and do some research on it, but. From what I can tell, it's just a pretty common thing. Doesn't do any damage to the fruit or anything. So not too worried about that. Uh, we did have a branch die off on one of these. I think it might have been that one. But I just cut the whole branch off and it seems to have recovered well. I normally try and prune them into a goblet shape. Uh, we need the airflow to be kept through the middle. These two here are fig cuttings, they're about three year old cuttings now. Uh, these are brown turkey I think. And we've never had a single fig on any of these, but again I'm always hopeful this year will be the year that we get some figs. <laughs> and my artichoke that I bought at the end of last year uh, was on offer. I think it was like 50p or something. Um, I did have it in a pot, but I've just stuck it in the ground here because um, it gets quite big and I don't want to be watering it every five minutes. Uh, so that seems to be springing back to life now. So that's a green globe, that artichoke. And along here, all my fruit trees. So this one here is an apricot. So no signs of life yet on that one. Uh, but it is still alive. It has survived the winter. Uh, if you just take your finger now, very gently, just scrape back a little bit of the bark. You see the green under there. So that means it's alive. It did, die, it did have some branches die off, uh, but most of it's fine. And that one there is a plum tree. The varieties on here. Kazar. And that's just started to Get some leaf start on here and the blossom. And there's quite a few blossoms on here, so um, as we open the flowers, uh, the blossom flowers will turn into the fruit. So everything being good, each one of these flowers will be a plum. The chances of every one taking or slim. Uh, that's a nectarine there. 
and it's just starting to leaf out. See the little leaf there. And I did see some blossom on here. I'm trying to pull out my lunch now. And I think the frost might have got some of them, but hopefully they got pollinated before the frost hit. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if we get any nectarines on that one. I would say it's probably unlikely, but you never know. It's quite a big tree, and it's I've had it just over a year, so didn't have anything last year, but hopefully this year we might get some. Uh, this was a new addition, sent to me for free. Uh, from Thompson and Morgan because uh, I allowed them to use some of my content on their website and uh, this was a Lord Lamborn apple tree they sent it to me bare rooted and I potted it up I did a video of potting this up and you can see there the buds just starting to open so Probably not this year, but hopefully next year or the year after, we might get a few apples on there. Uh, you never know, we might get one or two this year. Uh, this is a cherry tree here. Again, I did a video on potting this up in here. So if you're interested in seeing how I pot my fruit trees up, just have a look back through my videos. Uh, that's a cherry tree sunburst, nice eating variety, eating fresh, so that's the reason I chose that one because we, we don't like doing much with them other than eating them straight from the tree. I uh, haven't seen any blossom yet but plenty of buds and all these branches have survived the winter bar a couple which I snapped off because they were dead. <laughs> um, with the stone fruit, cherries, plums, nectarines, peaches, um, you can't prune them in the winter because uh, it allows disease to get into the tree so you have to do the pruning in the summer when it's actually growing. Uh, that way when you've cut it will heal straight away and nothing nasty about how to get in. Uh, but obviously if a branch dies then it goes brittle and you can just snap it off. Uh, this was another new addition. I only got this a few weeks ago. Uh, this is a pear tree. Uh, quite an unusual variety. Williams pear, Williams bon Critian, Critian. <laughs> one of the oldest and best loved British dessert pears. So I got this, this was only four pound um, from our local pound stretcher because they had a half price sale so just picked it up, just saw it and picked it up. It looked like quite a good tree. I went through all their trees and chose the best looking one and potted this up in, in quite a small pot at the moment but for the first few years you get away with a smaller pot and you can just upgrade the pot as it gets bigger. Uh, but it looks like it's survived the transplant from bare root into the pot. All these branches are, the sap's gone up because they all have uh, stuck outwards and you can see the buds forming on there. So it will leaf out soon. And um, one thing I always forget to show you is my rhubarb, which has just been sat there for a couple of years. Doesn't do very well there, so I may have to move this at some point. Try and clear around there and give it a good old feed or something. Oh, there's a bumblebee. <laughs> so you never know, hopefully, we might get some rhubarb this year. It's looking better than it did last year. Anyway, um, I'll take you over to the greenhouse in a minute. 
show you the rest of the veg garden. So these five here are current cuttings. Uh, these are over a year old now, almost two years I'd say. Um, I'm going to sell these. I think I'll give them away. Don't really need it. Don't really need any more current bushes. <laughs> yeah, but they seem to be doing well. Nice established plants now. And in here, this whole side of this bed is onion sets. I've got three three different varieties in there. And I did notice a few of them have started coming up. I'll try and find some to show you. There's one there. One there. So it looks like the majority of them are gonna come up. And one there. few dotted around, hopefully they'll all come up. Uh, if you're wondering what all this is on top here, this is where I've tipped my compost. I've just chucked all the stuff that was too big to go through the sieve on there. All the big bits of bark and stuff that you find in the compost. Another couple there. Another one there. So we should get some nice onions this year, hopefully. And all of my garlic has come up. Actually, I think every single one of them came up, which is good. So I planted these very late. Yeah, I actually planted these in the end of January, I think, or February. Um, but you can really plant garlic whenever you want. Um, they're cold. Cold hardy, frost doesn't affect them. So, uh, if you've got some garlic, just get it in. So, they look like they're doing well. And this end here, uh, if you remember that bucket uh, of leeks which are salvaged from the compost bin, uh, that's what all these are. And there's a couple of onions, uh, random onions which I just found in the compost bin uh, which had sprouted. Uh, they were like little tiny ones from last year, so I, I just chucked them in here just to see how they go really. And they all seem to have taken and they're doing well. The leeks seem to be recovering. Uh, they weren't looking too happy when I put them in, but see, so these are new, it's got some new growth coming there. So hopefully, we might get some leeks. Looks like the cat's been in here sitting on them. Bent some of them over. But I'll just straighten them up. They should be fine. So, all that's left in the veg garden to show you is all my trees and the herb planter here. So, I'll take you around there. So I've got loads of trees and I'm kind of starting a little tree nursery. Uh, there's all sorts of different trees here. I'm not going to bother going through each one and telling you them all because we're here all day. <laughs> uh, but uh, this one here is my empress tree. Uh, no growth from that yet. A few other things, the lilac, other bits of bobs. Japanese maples down here, and spruces, pine. Yeah, this is one of my apple trees which I grew from seed last year. So that's, looks like that's doing well this year. Japanese maples there. Looks like that one's. The frost's got to that one because it come out too early. Leaves come out too soon, and the frost will get them, but it will recover again. They'll die off and then come back. One of my little cherry trees here with blossom on it. It's quite nice. Uh, 
and all sorts of other trees, birches, willows. These are the willows. These are the seed grown birch trees. A couple of different varieties there. Uh, red birches and silver birches. Anyway, let me just show you these quick. These ones here are flowering currants. So they're not the edible currants. These are the currants with the nice flowers you see. Uh, these were cuttings uh, that I got from one of my clients. So they seem to be doing well. I think we've got four or five of them. So let's take you over to show you the herb planter. The chives there. Doing well. Starting a good flower already. Parsley, I think. Yeah, that's kind of seeded everywhere, that parsley. All these little things you see around here. They're all parsley. It's just seeded itself all over here. <laughs> Sage there. Thyme, I think. Try and remember all these. Uh, that's the peppermint. You can smell that, just tucked it off and smell it. Smells lovely. More thyme, another sage. These are all parsley. Self seeded all over the place. <laughs> I think that's sage again. There was something else on here, lemon balm I think, it's just starting to come back to life. That's one of them succulent things, can't remember the name of that. Rosemary. Okay. Yeah. Take you into the greenhouse quick, show you what's going on in here. See what temperature it got down to last night. Minus 2.8 in here last night, so that was with the door shut. Maximum of 25 today at the moment, it's 19.8. <laughs> That's quite a variation in temperature. <laughs> so, what have we got in here? <clears throat> a couple of little pine trees. <laughs> Yeah, I bought one of them little bonsai kits. This is a Aleppo pine. Uh, out of the six seeds that it came with, I got two which sprouted. So uh, it was only 99p for the kit, so quite happy with that. Uh, these are the elephant garlic, uh, the little corms that we planted. Uh, again, I did a video on that. If you want to check that out, go back through and have a look. So we've planted 34 of these, I believe, and so far uh, we've got 10, 11 which have come up, and there's no sign from any of these. Uh, I just moved all the ones that sprouted down to the end. Um, they didn't grow like that. <laughs> yeah, there's another one there just now to come up, you can see. So I'm going to leave them for a while longer. Um, because I've got a feeling a few more will come up. Uh, some of them come up pretty much straight away. And then this one's only appeared over the last few days. So, we need to see how they get. The roots coming out there. So, we'll have to get these in the ground at some point. And over here, here's all the seeds that we 
sewed the other day and all that's come up so far is all the beet roots have come up uh, we did four pots and then on the 19th of the third and then the other day i come in here and planted some more there so we've got four lots in there and you can see one seed per thing you can see how many beet roots you get per seed this is like four on that one two on that one two on that one and two three on that one uh, but we let them grow in the pots like this and then my plan is just to plant the whole pot not thin it out or anything and just let it grow in a little clump and we can harvest them as little baby beet roots a couple of the swedes have come up i did sow some more swedes as well <coughs> and the peas have come up so out of the 12 seeds that we put in here we got nine i think nothing in this wholesale which is strange um, all these ones have come up fine and we've got one in that one so that's not too bad nine from the 12 seeds because uh, they were quite old seed anyway and the other day i planted another tray of peas as well uh, doing these uh, successional sowing so i don't want a whole glut of bees at the same time so do 12 and then a few weeks later another 12 and yeah, these are all the tomatoes and stuff they're not going to germinate in here at the moment yeah, but i'm going to leave them in here they'll come up when it's warm enough and um, failing that i might take them inside i don't want these watering well it. so if they don't come up soon i might take the pots in put them on the windowsill but i'm not too worried to be honest i can always sow some more so um i think that's everything updated so the weather's on the turn again by the looks of it so we're in mid wales here in the uk and we've had some really funny weather we had some lovely weather at the end of march and then last week it was snowing and it went down to minus five at one point so everything's got a bit confused everything started coming out to leaf then the frost hit and knocked it back a bit yeah it seems to happen most years now uh, we end up with some sort of frost damage on the new leaves but everything will spring back it will recover and i'm not going to get too carried away and start sowing loads of seeds really early some people you see sowing them in january february uh, there's really no point but anyway guys so flip the camera around again okay everyone so <laughs> hopefully you made it this far if you've been watching um I do apologize for the long video um took almost half an hour to go around the whole bridge garden and talk about all the plants and whatnot so uh thanks a lot if you made it this far uh if you're wondering who the dogs are this one here is raven and this one's destiny come just come say hello don't trample any plants thank you anyway thanks so much for watching guys um i will be doing um some more videos try and get a bit more in uh, i know i haven't put anything on for a couple of weeks um I'm sorry about that, but uh, I'm going to try and sort these strawberries out. So, probably do a video on that and a few other bits and bobs. Uh, but anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you all have a great week. I'll see you on the next one.